Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar and together with my co-host Mark Ronich, who's been a reporter in the Capital District in the Capital for over 30 years. That's right, 37 years and counting, <laughs> and I'm hoping to do another 37 years. There so. you go. <laughs> anyway, so with all the experience that I've had at the State Capitol, I have a real, uh, we have a real honor here today. All right. a a pleasure and a privilege to have an assemblyman from the Bronx here, Mark Jone. Did um, I pronounce that correctly? You certainly did, okay. and thank you for having me, and uh, Flavio will get you everything, so you, keep it up. Uh, <laughs> you are a terrific assemblyman, and unfortunately you've told us that you will be moving on and running for the uh, city council in New York City. That's correct. Because there's an open seat, there are term limits, and you, this guy Jimmy Vaca That's correct. is leaving, so you're going to be running for his seat, hopefully successfully. You know, Mark, you know, you're talking about the future, and in Judaism, we always, you have to look for the present and the future, but we always have an emphasis on the past also, because you don't know where you're going if you don't have a past coming through there. So I actually was invited to the, oh. The capital. Well, I didn't even say that he's the first Albanian yeah, that's what born I'm or answer, uh, answer, first elected assemblyman with Albanian ancestry. That's right. First were, elected in the state. Because you were born here. That's correct. You weren't born over. Like, no, fortunate like, to you know, be born like in this great Billy country. Rosick was born in Jerusalem. Right. Yeah, so anyway. So you were in the case, so you brought the president of Albania because that's where you're coming from. That's your ancestry, and Jewish people are proud of theirs, and I'm sure you're proud of yours. So I went there. So you want to continue? Why would a Jewish rabbi want to go to the? I mean, I like to go everywhere. Jewish but, uh, rabbi is that redundant? Yeah, a Jewish right. rabbi. <laughs> I'm just saying, a rabbi from the Jewish faith would want to go to a reception that you put on for the president of Albania. What's the connection? Well, it an, it's an incredible story that isn't told enough. And uh, Rabbi, uh, you're aware of the story. The small country in the Balkans, uh, this little corner of Europe, uh, where we have a story that needs to be told often. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the only country in that part of the world where during World War II, that dark time, there were more Jews that lived there than they did before the war. Uh, and the real story is that not a single Jewish life was lost, where That's Albanians incredible. took these strangers into their homes, hid them at the peril of their own lives and their family uh, to save these strangers because of the atrocities that they were facing, the massacres. Uh, and it's all done under the uh, code of Besa, which is a code of honor. Uh, to be there for man, for fellow man. And Albanians live under the same principles as uh, the Jewish community. Our home belongs to our guest and God. And uh, it's under those pretenses that uh, the, the Albanians fought very hard to save every Jew. And the word got out, and Jews from all around the world were slowly making their way through the underground to Albania, this little corner of the world. You know, I just want to emphasize even one word you say to just frame the situation for our viewers because it's nice saying, okay, maybe people were starving, you gave a donation, and, you know, like the UN, you gave some, uh, you know, you gave some clothing or you gave some food t to charity. But to emphasize that, that the, the Nazis were vicious people. And if they knew that a non-Jew was harboring a Jewish person, they'd wipe out their whole family. So when you're taking in a Jew, you know, it's not like, okay, yeah, nice, I'll give him a, some cereal, you know, let him sleep in a bed in a corner. All right, very, very nice for that. But they're literally putting their lives in danger. And that's like, that frame situation was incredible that people would do that. Not only, I mean, there's always stories, and there are in Poland and Russia, there's some individuals, mm -hmm. but a whole country mm -hmm. should have that ethics. It's like, it was an exception. And I also totally agree with you. You know, it's just like in the newspapers, but everybody's always the bad news. You right. know, the, well, I mean, you have to be told also the bad news, you know, what World War II was. But it just seems anybody does something good. It's on page A, uh, you know, B30 in the newspaper. And if some schmendrick, you know, idiot uh, kills someone or, you know, that's front page news. You know, what a, uh, you know, what a low life that a person uh, is. Rabbi, the uh, Albanians are very humble people. They never told the story. And because of 50 years of communism, the story couldn't even be told. Really? Uh, but we've always left it to our neighbors and our friends uh, and the Jewish community to tell the story for us. And so you're not told enough, I'll yeah. say that. Your parents 
uh, were Albanian. That's correct. Is that right? That's what correct. town in Albania? A little town called Rech in Ulchen, which is in Montenegro. And mm -hmm. as you know, uh, Albanians are uh, one of those peoples that have been divided into five countries. So we're Albanians from Albania, Kosovo, which mm -hmm. everybody's aware of. Uh, and thanks to the help of uh, this country, uh, we have our own independence there. But we're also in Montenegro, we're also in Chamria, and Prasheva, and we're broken into five regions. Uh, our history, our language uh, keeps us together, uh, but... Uh, well, I always say that about Eastern Europe, is that, the, you know, my grandparents and their grandparents were born in countries where the boundaries don't exist, you know, the same boundaries don't exist today that right. they did back then. So, you know, same thing. We're, we're broken up into many countries, and Yiddish uh, evolved out of that, and that's our common language to some extent. Uh, but when you say resh, uh, it's R-E-C -E with a little, little right. Uh, what's it called, that accent? It's called the little accent. accent. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's over the C, I that's guess. Right. Yeah, okay. That's right. And um, that's in Montenegro. Now, mm. what's Montenegro famous for? Uh, being next to Albania? No. <laughs> is it, no Mont it's another is it small country. Uh, the total is it gambling? Or the, is that well, gambling? Montenegro is uh, making its way into the news recently with the development, the ports, uh, part of that um, ambiance that uh, James Bond, the uh, 007 movie portrayed. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a w old and relic area, mm -hmm. and it's the stone homes and the genuine people that live there that make that area so special and, and that's a what's the uh, etymology of the name montenegro because negro means black black mountain black uh, mountain yeah okay. a very mountainous area uh, very, oh. as you can imagine very difficult to uh, live and uh, prosper and be a farmer in those conditions and always subject to climate but uh, right. how many uh, times have you been to visit your home often home? often yeah. uh, and not as often as i like but uh, and i haven't gotten much since get, being elected well, let's put it this way. When you move on to the New York City Council, how's this for a segue? Uh, yeah. the, 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 your salary is almost going to double yeah. from what it is in the state. <laughs> and you won't have to travel as much, so you won't have as many expenses. So you'll be, have more money to go over to Montenegro and visit your relatives. God has been very good to me, and uh, I've been very fortunate. And money was never my issue. It was always time. Uh, oh, well. And as you know, although they call this a part-time job in, 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 as assemblyman, it really is a full-time job. And my family can attest to that. Last year, uh, during the first seven months, I had two days off. And I don't mm -hmm. say it as a complaint. I say it as, I didn't even think of it, but my office calculated this. It's seven days a week. Yeah. So although we're in Albany part-time, I can tell you it's a full-time job just being in the district. And that's from not only attending events and meetings and being there for the constituents, but really knowing your community and knowing what the needs are. And I go outside of my boundaries. The what are the, what district. is your assembly district right now? Well, it's a compromise of the neighborhoods of Marshall Parkway, Bedford Park, Pelham Parkway, Allerton Bronx, Avenue, or Bronx, Bronx. Bronx. That's right. <coughs> Now, Which is uh, the most important borough in the uh, <laughs> well, state. You know what's interesting is that my uh, when I used to get all the, the phone books, I grew up in Brooklyn, when I used to get the phone books. Nobody's five perfect. Boroughs, <laughs> and they, they just say The Bronx. That's correct. And it was, so the, is it officially The Bronx? The Bronx. The Bronx. The Bronx. And it was a family, Bronx, B-R-O-N-C-K-S, right. that had a farm. And you, everyone would go up to the Bronx to visit the Bronx family. Oh, so that's and, how they got the and that was it. Yeah, that's, right. that's how they got the name. So, so you're well versed. Oh. I, I wondered why, for 30, I wondered why years, that one, it didn't say the Queens and the Brooklyn. And that's how the only inland borough. And there was other things there that from Brooklyn, you have to cross a bridge <laughs> to get right. <laughs> That's right. And from Brooklyn, you know, if you went to Yonkers uh, for the Cross County Shopping Mall, that was going far. That right. was like a day In trip. a segue, how anyway. is the Bronx? Bronx always had, I'm from Chicago, to tell you the truth, even though oh I've been oh living here. But, you know, you know, oh, the Bronx, it was like, uh, you know, just a big slum. That's, I don't know, so tell us about it oh, and the, how it's growing. The Bronx is on fire, and I don't mean in a bad way. I mean in a way of incredible opportunities and development. Uh, we've never had it better. Well, it's your um, borough president to, to credit well, for that. Uh, yeah, everybody should take credit for it. Uh, but no, but, it's uh, really but before him, I mean, I never saw, I mean, the, the borough president's Ruben Diaz Jr., mm. and he was an assemblyman. And I don't know if you're a fan, but I'll tell you, before he got there, 
I never saw this borough uh, with so much construction going on as what this guy knows how it's to deal with economic boom. Yeah, it's really. incredible. The borough president, the electeds, right. but it's all the risk takers. It's all those people that still, we still have neighborhoods in the borough of the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. And it's incredible uh, to be a part of it where you can see the characteristics from neighborhood to neighborhood, community to community. Uh, we're so diverse that it's a tremendous asset. Mm -hmm. You know, our diversity there. I held an event my first year and it was International Family Day. And I, ha I honored every known country in the world and found a person in the borough of the Bronx. So 197 known countries. And all of them yeah. were able to be represented in the borough of the Bronx. And it was incredible. Yeah, it's, it is a, it's a fantastic story mm -hmm. that needs to be shared. And you live on City Island? No, I no. Uh, lived on City Island for 14 years. Okay. And when I got elected, I had to move into the district. And then oh. I live happily uh, in, on Pelham Parkway, East Chester Road, where I grew up as a child. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I got that. So it's right. going back to your okay. roots, as they say. Yes, so they the Bronx yeah. is booming. That's yeah. good to hear. You know, I knew that it was, but, you know, it just... So I encourage you to make a visit. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see it. You'll, no, no, you'll, I, you'll witness it yourself. Well, I'm a Yankees fan, so mm -hmm. I go there. Yeah. And, the and you know, along the, uh, the Grand Concus, mm. Grand Concus, they have these uh, banners now of all the famous people who came from the Bronx. Like, and, and it makes you proud to know that there was such a uh, history. Well, you, when you think of the history of the Bronx and the people that lived there and currently live there, the Jewish community had a strong impact yeah. on the evolution of the borough of the Bronx. Oh. And going back to Grand Concourse, yeah. where in the 60s, I mean, it was doorman buildings. That was the upper class. That mm -hmm. was where everyone wanted to be. Uh, and then the My Jewish community moved to Co-op City and uh, Pelham Parkway right. and grew up as a kid. I right. drive down Pelham Parkway and those benches uh, were filled. Right. You could throw a pebble. And there are lots of synagogues. Plenty of synagogues, synagogues yeah. and a lot of kosher delis, which are no longer there. But coming back, you know, we, we see a little rebound for the Jewish community as well. And there's interest and uh, it's wonderful. I had an uncle and aunt that lived on the Moshula Parkway. When I was a kid, I visited them. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's a shame, you know, it's a bit, you know, that neighborhoods go down. I saw that are so many different places, but now that it's being revitalized. And New York City is so, I mean, the whole city is so much to offer. And I always saw, you know, again, 20, 30 years ago, you know, I, I'm from uh, here in Albany. I'd say, well, pre, let's visit Brooklyn, the, the Lubavitch Rebbe's headquarters. You're going to get us killed, Rabbi? What are you going down there? Literally, you know, I've been around a long time, and now it's like, hoo ha, you live in, the, you know, right, New York right, City. Right. So, no, it's really well, nice to see it's it. Still a, it still offers some great values and investment opportunities. It's still cheaper than the rest of the city uh, when it comes to purchase of land and development. So, mm -hmm. we, yeah, you, the story hasn't been written yet. It's still <laughs> continuing, and there's more pages that need to be written about the borough of the Bronx. Well, one of the I have a list of legislative bad apples mm. of, uh, for that go back to late '70s. Okay, so it's a long list, <laughs> but you came into the assembly by defeating a legislative bad apple, Na Naomi it? Rivera. And how and her father is in the assembly now, and he's been there a long time. Jose Rivera. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you get along with him? I mean, is there tension? Is he okay? No, not at all. And you know that uh, I, I beat an incumbent is what I beat. Uh, I challenged an incumbent. Mm -hmm. um, I did it for the right reasons. I'm mm -hmm. fortunate to be here. Public service is the most humbling experience that I've had, the most rewarding experience mm -hmm. that I've ever had. I'm not sure my family would agree with me, but uh, mm -hmm. they've, they're making the sacrifice alongside of me in this regard. Um, the, my colleague, uh, Assemblyman uh, Rivera, is, he knows this is not personal. We work very well together. We interact together. Okay. I interact with uh, the former representative of the 8th Assembly District, Naomi Rivera, as well. So there is no tension. Okay. It's, just wanted to it was check just a in time and for ask change. how that was going. It's I a time for change. And, okay. uh, and hopefully when I move to City Council, there'll be another change. There'll be another change. You think Naomi will run again? I don't think so. No, I, she's I, done? Yeah, I think she's, you know, uh, did her time in public service, so, and, to uh, so to speak, and uh, <laughs> she's looking for opportunities out there now, and she's working on her own. Okay. She's doing fairly well. But you know, talking about the pay raise, because the way you said at the beginning of the show, it's really, it's disheartening, because here, I mean, I don't know what the reason why, maybe it is for the pay, but I mean, you have assembly people, and it's a big issue around the Capitol, should the assembly and the Senate get a raise, and they didn't get a raise. 
But I that's mean, not why you're leaving, is it? Rabbi and Mark, the one reason I'm going to the city council has nothing to do with salary. I, well, you so, just said money has never been a issue. Yeah. Fortunate for me, absolutely not. And I'm going there for other reasons. And it's about the potholes, the street lights, the litter. It's all local issues. Nine, more than 90% of what we do, the constituent services that we provide, are local issues. This gives me an opportunity not only be in my district more, but also address those local issues that are important to everyone, from safety to education, mm -hmm. quality of life, things that make communities vibrant, make people want to live in and raise a family and invest in. That's what the city council will allow me to do. It feels more enriching than being in the assembly and having to hurry up and wait and yeah. slogging through what you know, it just feels like a waste of life to, uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Albany is a very mystical place. Uh, and when you come out of small business and every minute matters and uh, you're expected to be responsible and uh, account accountable for every action and inaction that you have or don't have, uh, Albany is a little different. Uh, but we have a great speaker that fights for our conference. Who's from the Bronx. From the Bronx, uh, making a difference. Um, it's not an easy scenario to be in. Okay. How many people are in the city council? I don't even know. 51. So that's, I mean, so you can get things done? I mean, it's... Well, uh, how, yeah. many, how many uh, assemblymen represent uh, New York's, the five boroughs, you know, once you get, I mean, 80, you're in the 80th assembly district. Correct. And you're pretty much as north sometimes as they come. We have 150 members in the assembly, right. 107 are Democrats. No, uh, but how many of the I come 80? from the city. But, but you're, you're the northernmost? Um, Citywide, I'm, now 82 would be Dinowitz. Yeah, so you got, so you're somewhere uh, in the 80 range, you have about mm -hmm. 80 assembly, oh, because you got Long Island, Nassau, That's right. Suffolk. That's right. So you got about, uh, what, uh, Chuck Levine, well anyway, no, Michelle Salagas is right. from Nassau, she's at the Queen's border. So Chuck so, Levine, right? Right. He comes so, on the other side there. So that's like 15 districts on Long Island, so if you take out 87, 65, so yeah, you got about this, almost the same. Is, are you gonna, is your city council district going to be different? I mean, I know it overlaps with what your assembly district is, yeah. but is it larger, smaller? It's larger, and half of it my assembly larger. district is in the city council district. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's larger in, so I think it's 170,000 uh, constituents, so compared to the 124, mm -hmm. 26 that we have now. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, okay, but you're up for the task, you're up for the oh, challenge. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. It's gonna be a great uh, experience and uh, another, uh, yeah, we forget that. You go back to your entrance into this conversation. Mm -hmm. Before, you look at the past to figure out where your future is. Mm -hmm. And everything's a starting point. And everything should have an end point. Yeah. I'm looking forward to doing another eight years in the That's city right. council. And then exiting. And then <laughs> stage right. Is the well, limitations yes. or eight yeah, years? Yeah, term yeah. limits. Yeah. And then maybe he'll run for the Senate. Uh, well, I, Who's your senator? Jeff se Klein? The great Jeff Klein. It yes. is, right? Yeah. Okay, so. He's a friend and a senator. And, uh, okay. probably well, I guess you ain't going to run against him, are you? <laughs> no, he's a friend. And, uh, <laughs> not only a friend, but you don't run against someone uh, if they're doing exactly what they need to be doing. And no one's done more for the borough of the Bronx in that area than Senator Jeff Klein. You know, do you think there should be another uh, ver a version of the IDC at the, in the Assembly? Because there could be. I don't think we need one. We have a speaker that delivers, and I'm very proud uh, of having Carl Hastie as the speaker, and uh, he's done extremely well for the but not only the borough of the Bronx, but the I city and the state. I didn't say you would be part of it. Uh, I didn't say you would be part of it because you're, uh, you're a Carl fan and you're leaving. And but are there other there are other people who, you know, like Mickey Kearns, for example, if he wasn't leaving, I mean, he might be someone who would be. An IDC guy. You know. Now, Mickey Kearns has come back to the fold. He's yeah. in the Democratic Conference now. He had issues with uh, our previous, previous speaker, speaker uh, yeah. Silver. Uh, but he embraces Carl, and Carl okay. embraces him. And we're a big, happy family. That you have yeah. 107 mouths to feed, and that's not always so easy. And it's very, okay. So you are the chair of the Subcommittee on Microbusiness. Correct. Now, I know, like, nanotech is small. Right. How small is a micro business? Can it fit to a nanotech building? The, the, you know, the, the interesting part is the definition of small business, uh, and that's why we have a micro business. Small business, 100 employees or less. When we think of the mom and pop shops and the commercial corridors, they, nah, that's not a small business, 100 employees. And if you look at the SBA, that's 500 employees. Okay. They don't come into those categories. So 
when I was happy that we were able to form and I asked for it and finally got it under Carl Hasty, the subcommittee yeah. of small business, which would be micro business. And that is more reflection of our commercial corridors. So from pizzerias to delis to small restaurants where they're the owner is actually behind the counter. Okay. And they haven't had a voice. That's 90% of the backbone of this country, the largest employer, and they've never had a fair share. Yeah, I, I'd be or, a micro business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I always said to Lynn Calieros at Nano, SUNY Nanotech, is like, if you're, the smaller you're making these wafers, these, these, prod, these items in your thing, the bigger the building is that you have to make it. <laughs> I said, why can't, if you're making it so small, why can't the building be small? You know? <laughs> Interesting concept. But, uh, <laughs> so, my, like, but small businesses and, and then you have business in particular is something that I'm proud to be a well, voice for. for. But Very you, but few you actually, of my colleagues come from small business. You actually had to define it. You have a bill. 6650 mm. that relates to defining and establishing a micro business. Yeah. This yeah. wasn't even thought of. I mean, this, you had to define what this is. I fought tooth and nail, and I continue to fight tooth and nail for those small mom and pop shops that make okay. our community so vi yeah. vibrant and viable. They employ local people, right. yeah. they offer services and products to communities mm -hmm. without having to get into their car. Mm -hmm. They don't have the recognition or the support that they right. need. And it's, uh, they're the middle class. But wouldn't you think every farm upstate would be a micro business? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Have they, some farms have you been up to well, some of the farms? I upstate? love farming and you know, I, I've spent a lot of time on farms. And but have you been to upstate? Maybe? I have yeah. in Dutchess County. Uh, we have a family owned farm out there. You do? 40 acres. And oh. at one time there were chickens and goats and sheep and cows on it. And but it was a now. form of therapy for me. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm a full time legislator <laughs> and it takes up every moment that I have. But you haven't gone to visit like Bill McGee in uh, I have Madison not, County or something? I have not made up to Madison County. You know, all right, well, we'll have to get you up there and uh, to see what slog through the mud. <laughs> uh, something else that, that I noticed here is that you have a bill that criminalizes the sale of synthetic cannabinoids. Yeah. <laughs> what is, what is a, a cannabinoid? May you never have to know because the families that have been destroyed by the synthetic drugs, the K2s of the world, that uh, this product is being... K2 is being, a mountain to me. Well, K2. K2 is a product that was being sold over the counter in every convenience store, deli, grocery store, and gas station legally. Uh, uh, and it was uh, being sold for the purpose of consumption where children were getting high off of it. They were creating zombies uh, of these children. These were chemicals. What was it supposed to be? I mean, I'm just saying over the counter. No, it was a gum or a candy. The, or the incense is what they sold it under, but it was not used as incense. And so it was this used isn't to get like high and this isn't cannabis. No, it's under. A, it's a synthetic marijuana, is oh. what it is. Synthetic um, marijuana. And we and they, they're just getting more powerful and more elusive. Our laws can't keep up with the. New so, products that are being offered out there so that are that, giving children so, new highs at incredible no, no. detriment to their health and safety. So what's the status of your bill? Well, unfortunately, uh, you know, making criminalizing anything nowadays is not so easy, and we're on the trend to decriminalizing some of these issues. So it's not going uh, on now, and more your has buddy to be done. Carl didn't want to push it, huh? Well, it's not Carl. We have a whole conference here, and it's very <laughs> difficult. Uh, look, we try to push it to the point where at least let's go after those that are selling the product. Let's go after those store yeah. owners uh, yeah. and make them accountable for offering these products so av uh, readily available to our youth mm -hmm. uh, by stiff fines, second time a larger fine, third time taking away their liquor license, their lotto abilities and other things to make them close up shop. But mm -hmm. the, this is an epidemic. Mm -hmm. Whether it's heroin or synthetic marijuana, our families are being destroyed, mm -hmm. our youth are being destroyed, regardless of their ethnicity, gender, culture. Mm -hmm. And I wanna, I, and nothing is more important or paramount to me than working on getting these drugs off the street and those that are actually selling these products behind bars. Mm -hmm. Well, can you, do you think the city council will be more receptive to this? Well, I'll have a, large voice there on that issue and I'll continue that okay. fight.
So let me, ask, let me just tell the audience, you're a member of what, six committees, Committee on Banks, Local Governments, Real Property Taxation, Small Business, and Tourism, Parks, and Sports Development is one committee, and then you're a member of the Puerto Rican Hispanic Task Force. Yeah. But you should have an Albanian Task Force. You should be committee <laughs> one now. Be chairman. Yeah, correct. <laughs> chairman, exactly. <laughs> well, let's see if we can uh, have another uh, Albanian eventually enter uh, politics, but uh, <laughs> that'll be told. That'll, that'll take some time. And the irony here is a good portion of my life, uh, when I tell people I was Albanian, yeah. they thought I came from Albany. Albany yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. see how things come around? <laughs> but did you ever see the movie Wag the Dog? Yes, I did. Because that took, it was a fake war that took place in Albania. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so I always thought that was a, a kind of humorous, uh, yeah. you know, in terms of what. I wanted to ask you um, about the perception of um, being able to, to do your job and conflict of interest. I mean, it seems like these days, no matter what someone does, yeah. someone else can draw an inference that there has been some, yeah. something tawdry going on. Does that really, I mean, because you've been in the middle of something of, of that nature, and I just want to clear the air and talk to you I, about it. I come from a background of small business. Yeah. We've made investments. I have experience in real estate, whether it be development, management, property, and no one likes a landlord. But I'm proud of those professions. Sure. And they're honorable professions. You can't demonize me because of my profession or my business experience or uh, the things I've invested in, right. no matter how much you try. Can or you put a spin on it? Yeah. By all means, if my opponents want to make this a negative campaign, good luck, let them continue. I've got things to do, and I focus on the future and the work mm -hmm. at hand. Let them put every spin on there. I can show, my, my record proves what I've been doing. Uh, it speaks for itself. I'll continue to be a voice for all and not for any special interest. So, so why is the Observer newspaper really having a problem with you? That they're, I mean, because they're not a Bronx-oriented paper. It's a citywide paper. But it seems like they've got their laser focus on you. Well, I, I don't think it's the Observer that has it's that the focus on me or the reporters that yeah. have I think this is being done by uh, those that are uh, running for the seat as well. And I say, hey. Really? I, I'm the, proud of who I am and yeah. proud of my experiences and proud to have been known as my first title in life was Super Son. Uh -huh. Way before I was known as the realtor, the landlord, the developer, right. or the small business owner. And all of those titles have helped me become a more efficient, better person mm -hmm. and a better legislator. And you have a company, MP Realty, yeah, which real is with your brother? Well, no, I, that's the real estate brokerage entity that I founded. That you founded. That's right. So who's the P in the MP? Well, Morris Park is where it's located. Oh, Morris Park. Mark and Paul is oh, my brother. Yeah. It can mean a, a variety of things. I, I was confused. And, okay. Uh, but the name, is, the name isn't as important as what no, I but, did there. I, but, it's a but, real estate brokerage. Why are, why are people making such a big deal about, about where the food comes from, where the alcohol, who has the li uh, liquor license, who has this? I mean, does it, I mean this is, these are things. I mean, I come out of the food industry also. This, this stuff goes on all the time. You, you know someone who has a liquor license. You don't want to have to apply for one. So you go to a buddy and you say, hey, look, can you, yeah. can you do this and can we use your liquor license for this event and you supply the, the alcohol, you know? Look, and it's legal. It's everything. So why is everything, everything that you've done, done is legal? Is absolutely I, legal. Absolutely. And, and I'm not saying that's not. If, but I'm just saying, wh why would anyone even want to write about this and take up precious space in a newspaper and, and they, ink? That needs to, you know, when, when it's spurious. Well, when you're looking to undermine someone and you can't justify why you would be a better elected, you have to come up with negative hit pieces. And that's what they've done. I'm sure they'll continue to do. And this is a game of thick skin. My focus is on the work. I, I know how I'm going to deliver. I, yeah. I know what I have to do to get there. And come September, uh, I, I would never. I mean, if people came, to, if someone came to me, an opponent came to me and said, "You know, hey, you got to write about this." This is. I wouldn't. Now, Will Bretterman seems to have written at least two articles about you, and I don't understand why he's got such a. Why he wouldn't say no to all these other people when he doesn't seem to have any facts or anything to, to accept sure just that, stating right. something that just seems, well, yeah, this is all legal. I mean, and you should be out there saying it's all legal. 
Like, th these but, are questions that you should be asking well. well uh, what about you? I, I take this, pride I mean, yeah. in the events that we've held, in the things I've done for not only the borough of the Bronx and mm -hmm. every ethnicity. Yeah. I do more events than any other colleague that I know. I, on an annual basis, and I truly believe in the breakdown that we have, the yeah. various ethnicities that are represented. I do an International Family Day, right. an International Music Day, uh -huh. inter International Food Day. I uh -huh. promote one another. Right. And then when we realize that I don't know the language or the culture, but I can appreciate good food, yeah. uh -huh. good music, you break the glass ceiling, and you, re you learn something about another culture. That's right. And then in doing so, you introduce your own culture. We can't expect anyone to recognize and appreciate our ethnicity or culture if we don't appreciate and recognize others. Mm -hmm. These are the events that I take pride in. Mm -hmm. And being the only Albanian elected in the state, it comes with a burden as much as a responsibility. And, it's and that is to hold events like Flag Day and Independence Day. And it um, seems to be that you're not making, like the, no one is making money on it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're spending more than what's coming in from any donation or whatever. And, and Boy, that's been brought out in the article, so yeah. I don't understand any of this. I mean, no one's benefiting from this, and they're yeah. having all yeah. this food and alcohol flowing and all these things going on, and it's frustrating when you see something 2, like 2,500 people came together for the first time yeah. to celebrate a day of independence and, and ethnic pride. We live in the greatest country in the world. This is while you become productive members of society, anything positive don't to forget say. Yeah. where you came from. Hold on to your language and your culture mm. and become productive here. We live in that country that allows us to express ourselves in that fashion. Mm. How, that Independence Day was a tremendous hit. We had the mayor there, had Congressman Elliot Engel there, mm -hmm. and I hope that this year's event is going to be even bigger. You better. know, like you're actually, you have, this is the way we started our program, the yeah. working together, <laughs> Albanians, Jewish people, all kinds of international people. It's the beauty of America. We want to wish you the continued success yes, with good absolutely. health and whatever you're going into. and. Hopefully, uh, that Thank will uh, get together for only good things. We, Thank you. We've been much. blessed to have you in the assembly, and the city council will be blessed uh, coming up. I'm sure you'll be victorious and continued success. Thank, Thank you. you, my dear friends, and I'm proud to call you friends. I'm proud to call Thank you a friend, too. Thank you.